I frequently advised against connecting your DAC directly to your computer. Instead use a network bridge, streamer or a device like the Singza SU6 and here is why. Computers are made for anything but audio, unless special care is taken. The audio player software should be able to output bit perfect digital signal, there should be a very clean power feed to the output channel that also should have a digital output signal that has very low jitter. There are computers on the market that do this, but they normally aren't called computer. They are more expensive since all measures to achieve this cost money and they are often called digital music servers. As an alternative a quality network bridge can clean up the signal and feed the DAC with a quality digital signal. It further enables to have a computer elsewhere in the house to keep the fan noise away from your stereo and keep the aesthetics committee happy. But if you want to place your computer close to your stereo for practical reasons, there is the solution of the digital to digital converter, abbreviated to DDC. It takes an output of the computer, cleans it up and sends it to the DAC. Such a device is the Singer Audio SU6 USB audio bridge. Let's see how it is to be used. Let's start with a computer that holds your music preferably in one of the lossless formats like FLAC, Apple Lossless or IFFF. Then you need player software that is able to output a bit perfect digital audio signal to a USB output. Some examples are JRiver Media Center, Orivana and Rune, but there are many more. The computer will normally be connected over your network to the internet, so you can play music from quality streaming services like Tidal or Cobus or lower quality services like Spotify. The Singer is then connected over a USB cable to the computer and over one of the available digital outputs to the DAC. The DAC is connected to the amp over analog connections using RCA or XLR cables. Obviously you need a pair of speakers too, unless you use headphones of course. Depending on the player software on the computer, you may control playback on a tablet or smartphone. The old metal housing measures 230 by 175 by 60 mm and weighs 1.5 kilos. On the front only three LED indicators, power, play-in and play-in DSD. On the rear we find the USB input that connects to the USB on the computer. All other connections are for output. To start off with I2S, two versions on HDMI connector and one on RJ45 connector. On the bottom of the Singer there is a dip switch for further settings. The manual shows settings for a number of brands. Then the AES3 outputs, Toslink, SPDIF on both BNC and RCA connectors and AES EBU and XLR connector. Using two dip switches in the bottom the clock output can be set to master clock or word clock at 22.5792 and 24.152 MHz or twice that, depending on what the DAC wants to see. Provided the DAC has a clock input of course, most DACs don't. Last but not least there is a DC power input that has to fall between 7.5 and 9 volts DC. A meanwhile switch mode power supply comes with the unit. Inside we see a larger circuit board with a smaller on top of it. The lower board has the input circuitry completely separated from the rest of the board. The USB receiver chip is from the Exmos Xcore 200 series. The fast Sidelink XC9572XL apparently buffers the incoming signal. The signal is sent to the clean side of the board over a number of isolators. There the Sidelink Spartan 6 FPGA reshapes the signal, again buffers it and re-encodes the I2S and AES3 signal. Therefore the AES ABU and SPDIF outputs can now support sampling frequencies up to 384 kHz while the Toslink output goes up to 192 kHz. All 24 bits. 
I2S goes to 384 kHz 32 bit deep and DSD64 to DSD256 are supported for DOP and native, DSD512 only native on I2S. SPDIF and AES EBU support up to DSD128 in DOP while TOSLINK is limited to DSD64 DOP. For now the number of DACs that support such high sampling rates over AES EBU and SPDIF is limited, but that may change. Back to the circuitry. The board you see here must be part of the power supply. The sensor is not directly powered from the switch mode power supply but from a 7.5 farad supercapacitor. A supercapacitor is an ultra low noise power source that is somewhere between a capacitor and a battery. It has the capacity that is far greater than that of normal capacitors but is lower than that of a battery. It can be charged very fast and deliver current very fast, something a normal battery doesn't do. In the sensor the external power supply keeps the capacitor charged while it operates. When put under power it will need one minute to charge and when the power is disconnected it will stay on for a minute. Here using an audiophile power supply doesn't improve the sound quality. I used the Ferrum Hipsus and could easily compare it between the Meanwell and the Ferrum since it keeps playing when changing. I heard no difference. If you hear a difference it might be because the switch mode power supply pollutes the grid and other components in your stereo are influenced by that. Then the very important clock crystal. The Singzer uses the Crystex CCHD957 crystals and to further stabilize them has a self developed constant temperature system. The supercapacitor power supply further improves the short stability performance according to the manufacturer. The only thing I can see under the top circuit board is an aluminium block, I suppose that holds the crystals. Basically there's not much to tell about day to day use. After it is set up it just works. Whether setting up will need some time depends on the connection to the DAC. If you want to use I2S you might need to set some dip switches. As said the manual shows some examples for brands like PS Audio, Audio GD, Matrix, Holo Audio, Gustard, LKS and Wired for Sound. If you want to set up a DAC with either word clock or master clock input, again dip switches might be set accordingly. I started off listening in my setup too. The Mrans KI Pearl Light Amp, the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers, the RHEL T5 subwoofer and the Denafrips Aris 2 DAC. See my video about my reference setups November 2021 for more details. The Singzer was connected to the Aris 2 over a Van der Hulp Videolink 75 cable and to the Rune Rock NUC over an AudioQuest Pearl USB cable. The Rune Rock NUC was connected to the AccuVox AccuSwitch SE over a CAT6 patch cable. I was quite surprised with the purity of the signal. The low end was very open with good texture. Voices were rather clean with only little sibilance. The stereo image was rather deep and wide with good focus. It appears that the Singzer is rather capable of cleaning up the digital signal. So let's make it a bit more difficult by replacing the Rune Rock NUC by a Raspberry Pi 3B with 7 inch touch display, powered by an El Cheapo 5 volt 3 amp switch mode power supply and running Rupee software to make it a Rune endpoint. I normally use that to only display what's playing and simple start stop and skip remote control. So it has no headboard with quality digital output. This will deliver a rather poor quality USB signal and power signal to the Singzer. I heard no difference between the NUC. So let's take it one notch up. Let's go to my setup 1B. The Air Acoustics AX520 amp, the AudioFisk Scorpio loudspeakers and the MyTech Brooklyn DAC powered by the Ferron Hipsus power supply. The Singzer was connected to the MyTech using a Siltec HF9G3AES EBU cable and to the Rune Rock NUC over a Network Acoustics Eno USB A2B cable. 
The NUC was connected to the SOTM SNH10G network switch over a CAT6 patch cable. It confirmed the quality of the Singsa, so I added a BNC video cable between the clock output of the Singsa and the clock input of the MyTech. The latter needs to see a word clock of 45.1584 or 49.152 MHz, which meant I had to set the dip switches 5 and 6 at the bottom of the Singsa to ON and set the MyTech to accepting an external word clock in the sync menu. This further improved the resolution and sibilance control and resulted in a further relaxed sound. This is a very fine ménage à trois even with the Raspberry Pi as source. Since we are in setup 1, let's replace the MyTech Ferrum combination with the Cord Dave DAC. Here the limitation of the Singsa became more obvious. Don't be surprised since it faces the Aurelic Ares G2 that is over 7 times the price of the Singsa. The resolution is less compared to the DAVE as is the stereo image and the deep lows. Sibilance is only slightly less. Although that all sounds somewhat negative, I am convinced you will be hard pressed to find a digital to digital converter that is as good as this one at the price and even higher. Since I don't own a DAC with I2 as input. I could not try that, but the combination of the Singsa and the MyTech Brooklyn with the word clock connection does about the same and forms a very fine combination, especially with the Ferrum power supply. For 599 euros including VAT, 495 excluding VAT for customers outside the EU, you buy a DDC that really cleans up incoming USB signals to a rather high quality. It does any digital output save USB, including several versions of I2S. What's more to say at the end of this video? Remains to say that there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.